What's up everybody, a Sparrow with a Gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on Space Engineers. Uh, we are back on our Corvette Bill working on the planetary type system, and as you can see... Um, actually, you know what? Let me go ahead and uh, level this off a bit so that we're not falling all the time. There we go. We can descend, but that's fine. At least everything's kind of straight. Um, for the moment, I think I might use... if I... do I still have one in the hot bar somewhere? There they are. So I think for the moment I might actually just place a second seat over here. And uh, this will actually allow us to do a third person view. I don't think I'm gonna keep this forever, and a lot of people were telling me this in the comments as far as that, you know, you... whoops! Didn't mean to end up outside. Um, but one of the reasons, it's kind of preference-wise, I may not have to do it this way, but the original intent was to be able to have the seat rotate around and look at the different screens. Now, when you're in the seat, you can actually hold alt and look around, you know. So it, it may be kind of redundant and unnecessary, but it was the original idea. But I may end up switching that so that we get a better third person. Uh, now... And for this particular, again, this is another, um, uh, this is another, sur not survival, but, um, kind of just test world. This is not really, like, my main, uh, building world. And so because of that, I might go ahead, what am I, oh, there's solar panels here. Okay. That was confusing me. Um, since this is more about planetary landing and not about, um, not really about the... Yeah, thinking and talking sucks. Um, not really about all the building and function and all that stuff. I'm just going to make a access point here for us to be able to get in and out of the ship. Um, so that we can fly in and out and test things. Because one of the things um, that came from the last episode, we saw that I couldn't really... Um, Dis not descend, I couldn't ascend properly. Um, when I would hit spacebar, it would still go down. I've had mixed responses from that. But the general consensus is that the void thrusters are putting off more force in their inertia dampener state, and thus... Um, by the way, I'm trying to open the screen here. It freezes all the time. Um, so, essentially what's going on... I could possibly use a couple of large ones, maybe. That might not be a terrible idea. Hmm, where is my spectator camera? Okay, it's way down here. I don't need this at this point because uh, we took the, the third person seat. So what we could do um, is basically put like these large thrusters or something to that effect. Um, and put a few of them facing down to compensate because what everyone's telling me is happening and we're gonna experiment today here and find out But what everybody's telling me is happening is even though um, I do have ones that are facing away so that you can ascend and they work in space um, But what they're telling me is the inertia dampeners are putting off more force than the actual thruster when you push the control button so they're allowing it to hover, but then when I push it, it disengages the inertia dampener and the main thrust stats take over and they're not strong enough to keep it afloat, is the idea. So the way we're going to test this is since we're in creative, we're just... Ooh, nope, that was a bad idea. That was a bad idea. I did not compensate for the weight. Um, yeah, didn't compensate for the weight on that one. Well, what we'll do, um, as soon as I can regain control, because the simulator stats are going crazy. So, that's a quick way to land, in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> uh, but what we'll do is we'll see if that is enough, because we're definitely not going to use that much lift. I don't think. Oh, and the reactors are gone. Great! Um... Let's just grab one of these guys. 
find a spot. Any old spot will do. In theory. Okay, I think something went wrong. I think we're actually like in the ground now, so that's not gonna work. Um, yeah. Okay, so. I went through the process of reloading this again, so hopefully I can't... I, I really don't want to crash it again, because that would kind of suck. Actually, in fact, we may want... Okay, see, here's a great example of what we were talking about before. Um, so when I'm pointing this way and I hit the W key, I'm actually going further back not forward. So from the point that we are, we can't really stop the ship at this point. Like I didn't know that when I first entered the atmosphere and saved the game. So at this point, it it won't really work in that re in in like getting out. Though I did do this. I was deleting from the inside to get out and I thought, "Hmm. Skylight. That's not a bad idea." <laughs> so I don't know. I might keep that. I'm not sure. For now, though, I really just want an open access thing to the roof. Um, so I'm leery of using the void ones, or maybe we can just put them inside here, I guess. I don't know. Because I definitely need something... Uh, something that will... I basically, well, I could always put, like, just a big hydrogen thruster or something to that effect, but I, I really need something that will be able to lift the ship. So let's try just two large of these void thrusters and see if, since we're inside the ship, if we have enough time. It does not seem like we're ascending any any faster, or at all. It doesn't seem like we're going any slower, but that's still not really that good. And in case anyone was wondering, no, this is just basically to get everything going. I'm basically trying to... Oh, there we go. We got lift. Alright. So... Roughly about four large thrusters worth would be enough lift to get us up in the air again. Now, there is the problem of this is also going to make us descend faster, if my memory serves correctly, because... Well, I don't know. We're in 1G of gravity at this point, so we're not losing any gravity. So maybe I just put way too many for it to compensate for the mass. That could be part of it. The first time, I mean, when I dumped them all in there and it just crashed. So, I probably put too many for it to compensate for the weight. And I don't know that I need exactly four. But it seems... I mean, it's a sluggish ascent right now. So, if I did any less than four... We're still stopping pretty good, though. And we seem able to hover. Now, I did get a comment that said that um, whether it be the void thrusters or the game itself, I wasn't. Uh, it wasn't real clear, but that there was a bug, at least with a void thruster build, where you kind of slowly descend. I don't know if that's a bug or if it's just mixed stats because this mod hasn't been kept up um, with the current stats and things. So it may not be a quote-unquote bug. It may just be that the stats have never been rebalanced uh, for the newer setup. So, what we're going to do, let's see here. We have our um, spectator camera. So what I'm going to do, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this in, in, in truth because what we're doing... Uh, well, actually, hold on a minute. Let's do so. Let's do a bit more testing. So, can I move? We can move forward without an issue. 
now we can move up, but it is a little bit slow. I mean, like, we're not really accelerating all that quickly. Um, we'll back work. Okay, so back work's okay. It's a little slow, but I'm not worried about it. Sideways works. Okay, so what I was testing here is what we said just before I crashed um, a second ago was none all of the thrusts at the moment are proportionate so there's equal number of thrusters in every direction so when I pointed forward or pointed forward and faced away from the planet it still forward is going backwards basically because it doesn't have enough umph to get us out of the atmosphere now with four large thrusters we can actually lift ourselves up it does take it a minute though it's not super fast um, I would like it to be a little bit better, but at this point, I don't know if the weight will be a problem. Like, the more thrusters I put to get better thrust, the more weight I have to take into account. So, I mean, we can play around with it and experiment with it, but I don't know how many, realistically, how many more thrusters I'm going to be able to get away with uh, before it starts becoming kind of, like, um, an issue end of itself. Okay, I don't see us descending too rapidly. There was a way that this just went green. Where, where did it go? There. Are you there? Okay, again, we kind of are descending, but it, it's still around that point two. I'm watching the speed over here on the right, and it's still floating around the point two. So that's fine. But now we have a little bit more thrust. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, I think. Six large vertical thrusters, so that would mean three on each side. And, and this is a good example of the inertia dampening. So if I get up to 20 plus and then just let off, it drops like that. I mean, it just kills the throttle. Um, yet when you're accelerating, it's kind of like, eh, 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 you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, um, and I don't know if this would be, I think I did the math one. Whoop. This is why I wanted a skylight. I think I did the math one time on... Uh, the cost to material ratio like this is 10 magnetrons for one large void thruster and this is one and I think I did the math one time and ended up deciding that um, the smaller void thrusters were more efficient they weren't necessarily cheaper but they were more efficient well no I shouldn't say that they were they were cheaper um, but the amount that you would end up, oops, oh, the amount that you would end up having to do, um, uh oh, can't get back in. Crap! <laughs> it keeps kicking me back out. Uh, well, this is an issue. There we go. Um, so I might have to do some calculating and figure out. Um, I might have to figure out how many void thrusters or small ones I would need. So I might go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so um, it ended up being, oops, wrong button. There we go, there I am. I went ahead and put on both sides, if I can find the, there we go. Oh, there it is. So I put, I think it's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so I put 14 on each side, um, which comes out to like 28, I think. And it seems to be about the same acceleration rate of our six. So um, I'm not entirely sure offhand. The, let's see, it would be a little over four, I guess. Because six fours are 24, so it would take... Um, but for it to match the sixth, I, I don't know. I'm not really sure. I guess it's four times or five times whatever the 
Um, you'd need like five small ones to equal a large or something like that. I don't know the exact math. I didn't do it. But um, that seems to be... I think that's good enough, considering that we won't be taking off and landing on planets a lot. I mean, yes, you have trips and things, but I don't think it'll it'll be that big of a deal. Now, if we wanted to make it to where you could land in any old way, shape, or form, you could always add more thrusters, but again, you're going to be looking at power consumption and a bunch of other stuff, so I don't know if I really want to do that or not. Um, so now that we can actually kind of see what we're doing a little bit, um, so basically at this point, the way that it stands, you would fly in from any direction that you wanted. I'm not actually seeing the shields do anything, but I'm hearing them. Oh, um, a couple people were saying that's probably still the, um, it's still probably the rover. I'm inclined to agree, because I don't know anything else that's going to be clanking around and making noise. So what I'm going to actually do real quick here, since again this is a kind of test build or whatever, uh, we're going to grab a... Actually, since I used cameras or armored cameras on the other stuff, I'm going to use a regular camera. We're going to break that block, put that there, place a camera there. Oh, it's upside down. And then, go back into this mode, find the camera, and now I'm just going to accelerate, and when I start to hear that, we can see if it's the rover or not. Because it more than likely is, to be honest. No. Rover's not doing anything. Hmm. Well, now that's interesting and unexpected. I... Hmm. What else could be doing that? Uh, I suppose it could be... These guys, but I thought I had them maglock just like the other thing. Well, let's find out. Put a camera here. I should have had the mirror mode on for that, actually. Oh well. And we'll put one over here. There we go. And now, camera two and camera three. Oh wait, what happened? Oh, camera four. test this out. So it gets to about... I'm trying to figure out where it gets to speed-wise. 60. I'm not seeing it either. That's really weird. I have no idea what's making it clank like that. I'm trying to think of anything else that's loose that could be clanking about. Uh, let me go through and do some problem solving. Okay, so I have every possible camera thing that I can think of that's hidden within the ship that's not visible to me from the exterior. Uh, we've got this kind of area with the conveyors and the landing gears and whatnot. But all of this shouldn't be moving, so I'll be surprised. Airlock. I did this in case it was the chairs on the rotors, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I did this for if it was the ladder. I'm not sure, because it's still extended. Um, just in case. Again, the, the reactors on, are on rotors. Rover. And the two oxygen farms. So, yeah. I, if it's not one of these, then I don't, I don't know what 
we're dealing with here. It does seem to happen after like 60 m uh, meters per second, or 70. Nope. Oh, wait. Alright, so it's the... Huh. Is it the reactors? Can't quite tell if it was the reactors or not. Let's get up to speed again. Kind of looks like the reactors, because they're spinning. Yet they're not spinning. That's... Huh. Okay, that's weird. Um, do I have the rotors? Reactor primary. I don't have the rotors set up. I don't think. Advanced rotor. Current angle. Do, 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 do. I don't know what any of these are. Is there a... Let's take all of these. And for now, let's set their braking all the way up. And let's see what that does. Because in theory, that should... Oh, we were at an, inc an incline there for a minute. In theory, that should stop it. Nope, not stopping it. That's really odd. I'll tell you what, let's do one last thing. Where did my ship go? Whoa! Spectator camera! Too fast! <laughs> that was way too fast. Okay. So let's do one more ro uh, one more camera. But this time we're going to put it this way. Uh, whoops. Oh well, I don't care. Um, because my reasoning for this... 13, 14 should be the newest one, I think. Yeah. My reasoning for this is it's almost like... Okay, so for... For lack of a better example, um, it's like the rotors are over here, but they're facing the direction you're going. And, oh, wait, that would make sense, actually. Never mind. Because it almost, well, I don't know, it almost seemed like the shields were going this way, not going this way. So, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this goes. And I also wanted to deal with one other thing this episode before we get too carried away, or, or too wrapped up and spend too much time on something else. Okay, it is going that way, so it's gotta be the, it's gotta be the reactors. But that doesn't make any sense to me because none of the other rotors are doing that and I've locked all those down like to where their braking should be completely fine so that's interesting um that's very interesting how about we turn them safety lock speed Ooh. safety lock override let's turn that on because the Breaking. That's just how fast it stops. So let's do that. Let's see. I might have messed that up. So let's just keep the safety lock on for now. Obviously that will keep them from spinning, but... I want to see if it stops them from triggering the shields. It does. Alright. So, so, final test would be... And of course I'll have to go through and find the actual... Um... I'll have to actually find the the rotor that it actually deals with the reactors. But let's see if I set them to 65 on a safety lock speed, if they will stop. Bingo. All right. So that fixes the shield problem. So we need to set the rotors for the reactors at 65 safety lock. Sweet. All right. 
so I actually have one other thing that I want to test now that we fixed that. Is there actually a hole? No, there's not. Okay, cool. Not that it matters. Um, so I've had a few people suggesting that one of the ways we can fix the, um, the Mac cannon is to actually put an assembler right next to it. I don't know about this, so we're going to try it, because in theory, it's the same thing um, as putting, you know, the conveyors to it, because it's still using a small tube. Now, there is a large assembler that may be able to do this. However, I don't know that I can fit one of these back in here, because as you can see, the length is going to end... Well, I don't even have it spun the right way, do I? It's, it's much longer than I think I can do in that small room. Because it looks to me... One, two, three... So this is all three by three. I mean, these turrets are three by three. So if I put that... That's six... And then seven, eight, nine. So it's ten. It's ten blocks long. And I don't think I have that back here to go from the cannon. No, this only goes back to six. So I don't think I can put that there without, again, remodeling stuff and things. Which, actually, hold on. Now that I'm looking at it. No, not that one. That one. I'm one block off, basically. So, we're gonna try it this way. I don't really fully expect it to work, but again, I don't know what everyone was exactly telling me as far as put the large assembler and then do it that way, or if it was talking about you doing the, um, doing it with a regular assembler and the assemblers themselves just override the limitations. I don't know. So we're gonna test that theory out. And I have no idea how well it would work. Or will work. And then, the last part that I want to try with this episode, or for this episode, is now that, um... Probably should have evened out the ship first. Now that the thrust vertically has been kind of handled... Um... Oh, and this is something I didn't even think about, is... Wait a minute. Now that I'm looking at it, where is the Mac Cannon ammo in the assembler anyway? Uh... Okay, this is assembler two... I guess it'd be three. So, I gotta find this anyway, as, as it is. Okay, so if I read this correctly, theoretically, this 40 uranium and 14 magnesium should be enough to make two. And that should also be able to fit through the small um, conveyor system. So now, if we go to assembler three, I should be able to make a destroyer um, thingy. Okay, so now it's in the inventory. So now we go back to the inventory. We have this. Alright, so now... But I can't have the... Oh wait, destroyer Mac assembler. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, this is Mac Cannon 3. I can't quite read how many is here. I think it's 57. It looks like. And this won't transfer out. Dang it. That's what I was afraid would happen. Now if I put, um... If I put this on, it already has used conveyor system and cooperative mode. Let's use that. That won't help though, because I just remembered what that does. Darn. So that won't actually transfer. Hmm. Alright, so I'm still a little bit unsure about how all that's gonna go. So, like I said, if the solution is using a large assembler, I don't think that'll work for spacing. Okay, so I saved landing for last because, well, landing. 
Um, if it crashes, I gotta reload the whole game again, and it takes like 20 minutes for me on this world save, so didn't really want to do that. But at least we have a third person camera now, so we can do this a little bit easier. And I flew far enough that we have ice, or I think that's supposed to be ice. If it's supposed to be an ocean, they're not really, you know, doing water well yet, but I think it's ice. Now, I should probably leave um, the auto lock on to prevent a crash, but I kind of want to see how... Th eh, yeah, I'm going to do it that way first then. Oh wait, no. Auto lock's on. So those should be blue. And now we're just going to kind of... And I can't quite tell, honestly, if it's my flying or if the ship just kind of starts a little at a time spinning over. I can't quite tell because sometimes it ends up like lopsided, which is kind of weird. And I don't remember anything about the survival mechanics or landing or anything like that as far as what the average speed is and all that crap. Now, this is my problem with auto locking. If you're not perfectly level, well, actually, even if you are, it kind of just grabs at a weird time. Like, see how high up off the ground we are? I don't really like that. Um, so we are locked in place, right? Landing gear is locked five. Okay. So if I unlock, and then it pulls me into the ground. So I don't know what to do about that, because... It's like if I lock them, it, it's doing this weird thing where it's like sucking me into the ground when I unlock the landing gears. And for those of you that were saying, you know, pick the nose up, I didn't do anything. All I did was hit unlock and it pulled me that far into the ground. So my problem is I don't know if it's the mag locks or not. Uh, a couple of suggestions was just use standard landing gears. That will work. It will fix the problem because they're you know, standard and supported by the devs and everything. The problem with that is I'd have to redesign how the landing gears extend and retract because I was designing it off of them being per perfectly flat. And so when it retracts all the way, they're like flush with the little inset pods for the landing gears. So if I redo it with landing gears, then I'll have to kind of take that into account and redo that. It's not terrible, but it won't really look how I wanted it to look. So I wanted to use the mag locks, but I honestly don't know if I can, because whenever I did it manually, if you don't time it just right, they fall through the ground and you end up with the same result. If you auto-lock it, as soon as you unlock it, then it pulls you into the ground like this. So I'm, I'm a little mixed on the best way to proceed with the landing gears, but obviously that's going to be a problem uh, if it persists. So. We did manage to get a few things taken care of, though. The vertical thrust is done, and we fixed why the shields were freaking out, so that's a good thing to do. So I'm kind of keeping a running little list um, of things that we're fixing and changing and whatnot, so that uh, eventually I can go back and, and add all this to the creative version that's out in space, and then just make that like the blueprint, world save, whatever I want to do with it. Um, so on that note, I think we're going to wrap things up here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. In the meantime, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.